This is Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. In this prequel game, you play as Naked Snake, a CIA special operative during the Cold War era. Naked Snake has been deployed to Russia on a mission to aid a defecting Soviet scientist safely abscond to- oh, nice headshot- to the States. In this initial sequence of the game, Metal Gear Solid games are known for allowing a variety of methods to accomplish goals. Generally, the emphasis is on stealth, but as, as you can see, I'm not really doing that. The usual way I play through a new Metal Gear game is guns a blazing, because methodical stealth is actually not really my preference. As well, there are no carryovers or bonuses from a complete save here, this is entirely from scratch. So no items or equipment that would make stealth easier. I'll use elements of stealth and sneaking to complement my aggressive approach, but... Oh, he gave me grenades. Helpful. You do have a wide assortment of resources and strategies at your disposal, ranging from camouflage to wildlife to environmental hazards. You can provide distractions and mislead soldiers, interrogate them, or even completely fool them with quirky methods like hiding under a cardboard box. I prefer this kind of freedom, where I can play how I choose, rather than having to abide by a single playstyle, even if it is just labeled as recommended. In Splinter Cell, if you don't lurk in the shadows, you'll not get far. But here I'm able to do as I wish, and ultimately, I think games should allow this range of experimentation and exploration. Oh, I should mention the caution meter. Those are different levels of enemy alertness and wariness. If the sass goes into the red, enemies will actively seek you out and try to disable you, but otherwise, they'll be suspicious. Change patrol routes, investigate footsteps. Oh, I'm walking carefully across this bridge so that I don't stumble off, as you saw with some of the other folks who were previously on this bridge, but are now in the river. Anyways, if enemies think everything is all right, They'll just go about their regular business. Normally I don't care much for triggering alerts, but some people aim to play this game and get zero alerts the whole time, and the game will recognize you for that extra effort at the end. Metagaming is used in several contexts, but in this specific one we use it to mean changing gameplay objectives from what is given, or changing the playstyle from what is expected. In either case, a particular frame of reference is altered, and the game is approached differently by the player in some form. Rules, objectives, goals, these are more of guidelines and not really set in stone. They serve to govern a series of complex systems to varying degrees of strictness in each individual game. If we let ourselves play around with the arbitrary boundaries imposed on us as players, then ultimately we can create an entirely different game of an existing one, or create new narratives, characters, and interpretations. Do a barrel roll! Ooh, I found a shotgun. We won't really get to use it now, I don't think. We're approaching the end of this prologue sequence. You know what? I'll equip it anyways. 
Here will be a bunch of cutscenes that I am going to skip. And there we are. Okay, the Soviet I was supposed to rescue ran away. And I just shot a major character in previous games. This creating a time paradox, as this takes place chronologically for those. This is typically how I play it. Now for a pacifist run. I shot him with a tranquilizer. See, he's sleeping. Now I'm dragging his body into the bushes so that he doesn't end up detected or becoming collateral damage. Obviously, the best way to attempt pacifism here would be to avoid all confrontation, but in a game with mandatory boss battles and no way out of those through talking or persuasion, that's not possible. Consistency is ideal, so the next best way would be to change the meaning of pacifism to no kill. Knock out people via close quarters combat, tranquilization, or other methods. This is where sneaking comes in handy. Avoiding enemies works too. Or this. Freeze. Uh. Typically, after holding someone up, they'll drop their weapon and then pass out from the shock. Oh. Oh, my bad. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Um, does that count? I didn't kill him technically. His lack of balance did. Now for a stealth sniper run. Sniper rifle only, as much as I can at least. And no red alerts would be the main two caveats here. Because when you meta metagame in this way, you have to abide by certain rules. If you break those self-imposed rules, then it becomes freeform, and it loses the meaning of playing it that way in the first place. You have to stick to the guidelines you set yourself throughout the entirety of the playthrough. What's interesting is that through doing these three playthroughs, I've created three different naked snakes, all based on the same template, but different protagonists that just share the same face and backstory. My first naked snake was very John McClane diehard, yippee ki -yay. Maybe even a bit of Rambo. Typical action hero. My second was reluctant to hurt anyone, avoiding taking lives unnecessarily, if not completely. My third and current is a cold, calm, dedicated sniper, taking out targets from afar. Usually blank slates, silent protagonists, and player proxies are most effective for these sorts of situations, such as Bioware's lead characters in RPGs, or characters like the various iterations of Snake, be it Naked Solid or Old in the Metal Gear Solids, or Gordon Freeman in the Half-Life series. Metagaming's change of scope is more obvious in multiplayer games, where you get things like Left 4 Friends out of Left 4 Dead 2, though it still has a significant effect on experience and retelling in single-player games. I'd like to argue that we're constantly, in fact, metagaming, be it active or passive, expected or unexpected, knowingly or subconsciously. There's what's inside the game, and there's what we bring to it, the way we play, the influence of our own thoughts and predilections, personal ideologies and so on, affecting and being produced by our play moment to moment. The way I typically play Snake will be different from how you play Snake, or from how anyone else plays Snake at all even if it's just in the most minute of ways. Choosing to take a different path, not to shoot a hornet's nest, things that are constantly left either to the interaction of complex systems or the smallest decisions of the player. Salen and Zimmerman's rules of game design propose that there is the embedded narrative, and then there is the emergent narrative. And these come together to form a full experience in the medium of video gaming.